Hey guys, Nas here with another video. In this video, I'll be going over the best build for Oswald with my Ignis Ardain build. I used this build on my first playthrough and it incinerated all my foes. So with that out the way, let's get into this, yeah? Before we get started, you'll want Oswald on the Arms Master job so he can wield the following weapons. If you haven't unlocked the Arms Master, it can be obtained in Gravel right here. If you need any further help, then I'll have my guide in the description. Onto our equipment. You'll want the Fire Starter Sword which will increase our fire damage by 30%. It could be found in the Eastern Ku Sands. For Lances, you'll want the Fire Dragon's Glaive which can be found in the Decaying Temple right here. If this area is too high level for you, then the Scorched Bone Spear works perfectly fine which can be found in the Quicksand Jail. For daggers, you'll want the Moon Eater which can only be obtained after you start Throne Age Chapter 5. It can be purchased or stolen from this NPC in the Lost Seed. For staffs, we'll want the Battle Tested Staff which will give us the most elemental attack increase. This can only be obtained from Rock after completing Particios Chapter 5. Our Axe and Bow Slot don't matter as we'll be spamming fire attacks even if the enemy isn't weak to them since we'll be dealing 90% more fire damage backed by our massive magic stat. Since our damage is based off our elemental attack, I then went and stacked as much as I could find. For Shields, you'll want the Swift Shield as it'll increase our speed by 47. This is the best stat increase I could find to bolster our offense. We don't care about our defense because the enemy will die before they get a chance to hit us. You can purchase it over here in Merry Hills. While we're at Merry Hills, we can also obtain our headpiece. The Mermaid Circlet can only be stolen or purchased from Hermes. In order to get her to spawn, you'll need to complete Agnea's Chapter 5. After doing so, you'll need to start the side quest Lila's next chapter. After starting the side quest, you'll need to go on top of this bridge to continue. We can snag our item from Hermes right here. After completing the side quest, I couldn't find her so if anyone knows where she is, please leave a comment down below to help out the community. For the chest piece, we'll want the Blessed Vestments which can be obtained during the day from this NPC. Onto the accessories. Fangs of Herocity will increase our damage when boosting. Since we'll definitely want to be boosting for maximum damage, this is a no-brainer and it can be found in the Curious Nest Cave. Lila's amulet is acquired after completing the side quest we started to get the headpiece. Next, we'll cover skills. After testing out all potential combinations, these are the four that perform the best for boss fights. Deal more damage from Warrior. This allows us to surpass the damage cap and hit the new one. Peak performance from Arms Master. This will increase our damage by 50% as long as we're full HP. If you're missing any rusty weapons, then I'll have my guide in the description. Price of power from Arcanist. This will double our SP cost, but we get 50% more damage. If you haven't found the Arcanist job yet, then I'll have my guide in the description. And lastly, SP Saver from Conjurer. This will bring back our SP cost to normal from Price of Power. Check the description if you haven't unlocked it yet. Now that we're set up, let's go over Teammate Synergy. I'm using Throne with the Merchant Subjob. Throne's passive allows us to have an elemental attack increase for free during night. She's using Merchant so she could help break enemy shield with Hired Help Beasting. Tenemos is used for similar reason. He applies an elemental defense down for free during the night. Scholar's the subjob because Elemental Barrage has the highest hit count combined with his latent power to erase 6 to 8 shields off any enemy. Casty is our last member. She's used to give BP to all our allies because she has one of the strongest support in Medical Concoction. Their equipment isn't that important. Just make sure they have more speed than Oswald so they could break the boss before his turn comes around. For skills, you'll want Boost Star from Merchant. Having an extra BP is always nice in case Casty goes last. A step ahead from Inventor. This allows you to take a turn before the initial fight begins as long as there's no ambush or surprise attack. This is completely busted and I abused it. If you haven't found all the inventions, I'll have my guide in the description. Full power from Merchant, so Casty and Tenemos can always use their latent power. You can add any XP or JP passive since these three are all you need. Now that we're fully set up, I'll do a quick battle here to showcase how you want to generally use this build. With Casty, we'll want to boost with our 2 BP with Medical Concoction and use our latent power to not consume our resources. 
Pomegranate Leaf twice, Diffusing and Striking Serum will give all our allies 4 BP. With Throne A, we'll want to use Hired Help and Beasting to break any shields that the enemy has. Beasting counts as Omni Element, so we don't care what weakness they have. Tenemos will defend, so we get to go first next turn to break the enemy. We'll want to maximum BP and Elemental Barrage while using the Latent Power to delete the enemy's shield. For the sake of demonstration, I will skip everyone else's turn to showcase Oswald's power. We'll want some maximum BP Alfin's Wisdom for maximum damage as it'll give us 3 casts instead of 1. Since we just used our BP, we'll want Casty to refresh it like she did before. This time we could do another Pomegranate Leaf. Time for the finale. You'll want some maximum BP, latent power so the AoE turns to single target, and fire away. Hopefully this video helped you defeat any boss that you were stuck on, and if you enjoyed this video, consider checking the description for more Octopath content. And don't forget, if this video brought you value, please leave a like and consider subscribing to see more, as I plan on making a ton of Octopath Traveler 2 videos, and I play a wide array of RPG games, and I break them down just like this. Until the next video, I'll see ya.